Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex over at Laser Everything, and we're here at Light Object where they have literally thousands of water chillers, and these things are awesome. Michael and I are gonna take one apart, we're gonna put some scalding hot water in it for science, and we're getting started right now, so don't go anywhere. Light Object's actually really well known for their amazing chillers. 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 Right, those are the things you... Oh, right, you're too good for chillers. You have an <laughs> RF tube. You're air-cooled. I'm air-cooled, but but I'm getting into some lasers that require chillers. So many people that use laser engraving cutting machines need chillers because they have glass tube CO2 lasers or UV lasers that require chillers, and Light Object makes some of the best ones. So, Good old fashioned standby is the SNA 500. Everybody knows that one, it's big white, like yeah. chonker. They're reliable, but they're very tankish and they're yeah. kind of hard to use. The water meters in the back, they are pretty loud. Light Objects looks really nice. So I wanted to show you they were the best. I mean, are we gonna like check them out and like see if they actually work? Well, yeah, dude, I can, you know, we can run some hot water through it and we can maybe take a temperature or something. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Did you bring a thermometer? Uh, no. I did. Oh, what is that? <laughs> The thermal thermography. <laughs> oh, okay. So we'll do some thermal imaging. Yeah. We'll heat up some water. We'll run it through the chillers directly through the pump and we'll see how effective it chills on its way out. Sounds good. All right, let's, let's do, it. do it. I told you it was going to hobble. They're not too bad though. No, they're Actually. not too bad. I'm a small guy. So the chiller is empty currently and we're going to be filling it with really, really, really hot water. Yeah. And we're going to see how well it cools. Like hot water. Like hot water. Yeah. yeah. Like really hot water. And Marco just told us the uh, controller is actually going to be able to give us an accurate reading of what's in the reservoir. Yep. So we'll be able to see that number go up. Yeah. And that's right over here. So that gives you the internal temperature of what's in the tank. Exactly. Yeah. So I think we'll pour some hot water in, we'll get a reading, yep. and then we'll switch it on, let it do its thing, yep. and, and check we'll temperature the water out. It's dumping water out there. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Let's do it. You think it's hot enough or should we give it a minute? I think it's hot enough. Let's That's take it. a reading. It's really hot, but we can go ahead and take a reading. Yeah, sure. What do we got? We're at like 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I would say that's probably uh, sufficient, wouldn't you? Yeah, All yeah, right. that's good. So we're at 200 going into the chiller. Slowly. <laughs> Don't feel like getting splashed with hot water. I like how the steam's coming out. Go. Uh, side note, don't fill your chiller with boiling water at home. Right, this is just for <laughs> science. For science. All right, so now we're gonna switch the chiller on and we should get a reading. Yeah, yep. and it's an immediately gonna start exiting out of the machine. That's why we've got this here to try to capture the water and I'll be taking a reading over here. Yeah. Remember, we put in 200 degree Fahrenheit, basically boiling water. Literally just now. Right, yep. and we verified that and now we're gonna check right here. All right, let's do it. All right, I'm going here. Ready? Ready. We're at 61 degrees Celsius right now. 62 degrees Celsius. It's already half the temperature. It's at, it's at 113 degrees Fahrenheit coming out. And it's dropping. It doesn't like what we're doing. It's because it's too empty. So let's put the jar back in. Let's do okay. a, little more, a little more light. Yep. Just drained it that quick. final reading yeah we've got a final reading we're down to 116 117 degrees Fahrenheit so they're basically drop the temperature within seconds halfway right and if we would have kept cycling this longer at that rate I mean you can do the math you right. know it's dropping the temperature real fast real fast 200 and change yeah right? and and in just a couple of cycles through within literally under two minutes it's already down to 117. it was measuring about 150 degrees fahrenheit once it had moved through the coils in the reservoir too oh, so nice moving through those coils reduced yep. the temperature by about 70 degrees fahrenheit right and then once it had exited it had already dropped another 20 
degrees. The second pass through, we got it under that mark. So. <laughs> exactly. What Marco was just saying is these are constantly recirculating the water in the tubes. Yeah. Literally minute by minute, you know, it's getting it down to basically what I think laser tubes like to work at like room temperature, right? Yeah, 70, 60, yeah. 70 degrees. Yeah, yeah. Like, like a comfortable room temperature. Yep, I keep mine at about 17 Celsius. I would say very effective. I mean, we poured scalding hot boiling water in there. <laughs> yeah, we really put it to the if you're If your laser is boiling the water inside the tube, you have a problem. Right, right. Yeah. That was like a worst case scenario. Yeah. And it was able to handle it. And it handled cool. it. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool to see for yeah. sure. I just want to get a really nice shot of this. Yeah, it's at like 115 still. It's pretty impressive. So you used to do refrigerator repair? A little bit. A little yeah. bit. So yeah. you, you know some of these components better than I do for sure. Just enough to be dangerous. Can you <laughs> can you talk to me about what's going on in here and maybe the differences between the 800 watt and the 1600 watt here? Yeah, you know, we were talking earlier. What's really cool about these two units is the frame, the housing is basically like the same size. Right. So you're not like, because you have a bigger laser and a bigger tube, like what's cool about these is you're not gonna take up more space in your shop. Mm -hmm. You just need something stronger if you have more watts right. and what I noticed on these was they're almost identical inside except for a couple of things so each one has the evaporator coil which looks like it's about the same size mm -hmm. the tank is bigger on the 1600 sure which means that it's got more coils in the tank that are getting icy cold right. as the water is in there, the hot water is coming in. And here's the tank on the 800. And smaller, still has the coils inside. Right. Now look at the compressor on the 1600. Yep, there it is. So right that's there. the that's... compressor that's compressing all the refrigerant, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Look at the size of that one. Yep. Now this one over here. Much smaller. Smaller. Significantly smaller. Right. And so, uh, these take different refrigerant too, right? Yeah, so he mentioned that. The stakes are 134A. Mm -hmm. And you can recharge these compressors. That is a super cool feature. Yeah, we have the recharge valve right here. So if you guys want to ever recharge these, and they do need recharging every, what, couple of years? Yeah, maybe every five years yeah. or something. Depends yeah. on how much you're using your chiller. And that's a feature that you get on the 1600 watt as well. So you've got the recharge valve right here, though I believe he said 410A yeah. right yeah. here. Yeah, 410A. We just were able to figure that out just by reading it. That's why yeah. I love these, because yeah. they're really accessible. You can open them right up. You can touch everything inside and they're quiet. They're quiet. They was, are very quiet. I didn't shoot the clip earlier, but you were talking to Marco while the machine was running and then mm -hmm. you were like, oh crap, it's running. And then you're like, but where's the chiller? Yeah. And it was like, it's on, dude. It's on. And it's I on. had to double take over there while he was using we're actually, it. Actually, there's one on right now yep. over there being used yep. actively and uh, we're sitting here recording and you can't even hear it. So nope. really impressive for that reason too. But one of my favorite things about these is that the water gauge is in the front. Yeah. <laughs> um, Right the, here. The older SNA like 5000 series chillers are in the back. Yeah. So you always have to like climb over it, but stick your head between the laser and the chiller and mm -hmm. like with a flashlight and like check we the reading. We had that on the R machine that we used to have at the shop. Remember? Yeah. It was yep. in the back. Yep. It was in the back. We definitely experienced the alarm during our experiment where it was like. <laughs> 62 degrees Celsius. You are out of water. You're so out of water, bro. It's yeah. time for you to stop and so something happened. You if need something, to fill up yeah, water. if there's a dangerous situation going on essentially with your laser, this chiller is going to let you know about it. Yeah. And that's really nice too. Yeah. But the best part is that they're inexpensive. They're only a couple hundred bucks and they're cheaper than the SNAs. Yep. For genuine ones, they can run five to seven hundred dollars. Really that's nice. Yeah. It's That's a big, real nice. It's a big deal. One other thing I just want to say, I'm sitting here as you're talking, I'm like looking at the wiring and the way it's all sutured up inside yeah, and yeah. just how they put it all together. And I have to say it looks really clean inside. It's very <clears throat> clean, dude. Yeah. yeah. So which one of these, Alex, uh, do you think would be more like, depending on if you've got a 30 watt, 60 watt, 120 watt, yeah. 200 watt, when, you know? When we're talking gantry CO2 lasers, the 800 watt is actually really capable. You can go up to like, 70 or 80 watts on that 800 watt machine. Wow. Once you start to pass that level on mm -hmm. your CO2 laser, you're really gonna wanna start taking a look at the 1600. Mm -hmm. The price difference is really minimal between the two. I think it's a 45 to $50 price difference. So if you think you're going to upgrade soon or you might be getting a larger tube or a more powerful laser in the future, it might make more sense just to pick up the 1600 yeah. and have that extra available. So it's not gonna hurt anything. Right. But if you're on a really tight budget and every dollar counts, 
800 can handle up to like 70, 80 watt tubes. Yeah, that sounds great. If you guys want to pick up a light object chiller, obviously it's a light object week. We're gonna be saying this a lot. You guys can check out the link in one of our video descriptions to visit light object and pick one up for yourself. We both have discount codes available for you. So whether you're over at Laser Engraving 911 or yep. Laser Everything, you can pick one up today. Do it. We got a lot more to do, many more videos to film. Yep. We're just cracking the surface. Not even close to the end of the day. Not even. I'm ready to party. Not even remotely close. Let's party. Let's party. All right. Let's <laughs> do it again, right? All right. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. Feel like that better? Unless you guys need a water chiller for a gigantic fiber laser cutter, 1.5 kilowatts, that would be like something like this right here. The 1600 and 1800 watt chillers are gonna be perfect for you. I really hope that this demonstration helped you guys out. If you got value out of it, don't forget to smash the like button. Let everybody else know the content was good. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time a light object episode gets published. Remember, if you guys love Laser Everything and the content we produce here, the number one way to support it is over at the LMA. All of the content that we make on Laser Everything is provided for free for everyone, thanks to our contributors over there. If you want to find out more, head over to masters.lasereverything.net to get all the details. Anyway guys, I think that's all we've got for today. We have so much more to show you, so stick around, because we're coming back with more light object really, really soon. <laughs> nice one, Alex. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I'll keep it. Yeah.